Hey. Hi guys, here we are again today, live Hi. in with the studio audience, of course. Uh -huh. We do have a studio audience who, yeah, see, there we go. <laughs> it's yeah. terrific. Our top story today is California market statistics. Yes. <laughs> market update what's happening in this great state it has gone through a few gyrations through the day through the day through the day through the year through every well, day today been a busy day <laughs> <laughs> so to talk about some of the impacts um, this is from the California Association of Realtors they just did a market update on the economic updates in the state of California so we're gonna bring you some of that those highlights here so, you know, the, the, not everything has changed. Uh, the things we've already had going even before the pandemic were things like housing shortage, that we do not have enough built units in the state of Califor California, and this just made it worse. So uh, our supply is still problematic. You know, I mean, we can talk about supply problems, Pretty much across the board, I have a friend that was looking for a new Rolex watch. No Rolex watches out there. We were buying some paint for a rehab that we were uh -huh. doing. No paint out there. Yep. We have friends that are looking for a new car. No new cars out there. Right. We have buyers out there looking for a new home. Very limited supply of new homes, don't you think, Liz? That's right. It's, it, it has not... Even though some of the statistics show that we've had more sales this year to date than last year to date, uh, numbers are quite st uh, dramatic, we'll get there, but it doesn't really feel like that in the market. It doesn't. You know, we're looking at all the numbers as they come in, and based on a year ago, last August, versus this August, I mean, the statistics are almost mind-numbingly more properties on the market now than there were a year ago, but it seems like the buyers have followed the sellers into the market. So even though there's more properties on the market, there's still multiple offers basically on every property as long as it's priced right. That's right. You'll see we're seeing some price reductions in the market. Uh, that's because sellers have priced things really, really too high. <laughs> yes, they have, and that's always a telltale sign. You can almost tell when a property is priced too high just by the days on the market. I mean, if a property's been on the market for 30 days, everybody knows, including all the buyers, price is too high. Yep, it doesn't even take 30. It doesn't take When the it median takes, days on market right now is eight, if it's on the market for two weeks, you know, usually it's a pricing issue. And recently, last week or two, maybe three, we have seen price reductions in the marketplace where that wasn't the case right. just three weeks ago. That's how fast this market is evolving. Right, and we'll see because things are changing uh, as we speak with school requirements in California and lockdowns and what's going to happen. And the, we have a recall election coming up here and what's going to happen. So we have some unknowns happening in the great state of California. We do. There's, you know, certain schools that are starting tomorrow, first day of school. Oh, Hold on. Sorry about that. Didn't get the do not disturb all that. Not. I did not. I wonder if I just killed my... No, well, we're still on. Hey, how great is that? See? Mark is very Hi. active. Yes. Mark is I'm happening. I'm on the phone all day. Still am. <laughs> anyway, where was I? <laughs> we're talking about the schools opening. Oh, schools. Yes, college opened last week. Yep. Uh, for people we know, school yep. starts tomorrow. For people we know, somebody near and dear to us starts school tomorrow. So it's all coming <laughs> together, kind of, you know, middle of August. But we're seeing things hopefully get back to normal. Is yep. that going to happen? Well, what's that? What's normal? I don't <laughs> you know. don't even say that, the new normal no anymore. There's no such thing. There is no <laughs> su uh, such thing. So the, uh, the economists, the experts say that we have solid sales and double digit price growth in 2021. Well, that's what we saw last year or two, but they expect it to continue. And the forecast is optimistic, but they do expect a downshift. Um, interest rates are still a big incentive. Of course, they're still around 
percent. So it, it's really, we're getting spoiled with these rates that we've had for so long, but it's still a great time to refinance if you haven't yet, or again, a great time to buy a home. It is, it, we're probably looking at rock bottom at 3% interest rates. I mean, you know, the lender has to go through all the gyrations to make the loan, and then they still need to make money on the loan. So there's not a lot of profit left, I wouldn't think, at 3%. I don't see them going to 2%, maybe 25 So 3%, historically low, it just really cannot get any lower. Right, it's just crazy. The, the, we've just been through the purchase process. It was very painful. I think all realtors should be required to buy a home or buy a property every now and again, just so you know what's really happening. <laughs> there is a huge backlog in the system. There is, and you would think that sooner or later it's gonna catch up, but it seems like it's definitely gonna be later. It's not gonna be sooner on the properties mm -mm. as far as the loans and the loan process and the people in the loans, like Lisa and I were uh, lucky enough to get another property to add to our portfolio, so we're very excited about Yes, but it was a rocky process. Oh my goodness. So one of the good pieces of news is the share of first time home buyers is the highest it's been in 10 years, if you can believe that. Even with our prices going crazy and our median home price and average sales price uh, setting records, 38.4% uh, of the buyers in 2020 were first time home buyers. And I think that's really incredible. It's um, a very encouraging too. It's not only incredible, it's encouraging because they're stepping out from renters to first time home buyers, which absolutely gives them so many benefits of owning a home. And I think the biggest benefit of owning a home is the fact that if you look at what a renter's net worth is compared to what a homeowner's net worth is, they're dramatically, dramatically Yeah, it's like different. 40 times uh, difference from a home owner to a renter in the long term. Yeah, so the average rental, and these are gonna be national statistics, is you know their net worth somewhere around four to five thousand, where a homeowner's net worth nationally about a hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Big difference. So back to my first time home buyers, um, the percentage of buyers with twenty percent down or more in two thousand six was twenty three percent, and in twenty twenty it's thirty three point one percent of first time home buyers have at least twenty percent down, and the percentage of home buyers with zero down payment in two thousand and six was forty point nine percent. Hence why we had the crash right after that. Um, but in 2020, it's only 10%. So only 10% of home buyers are buying a home with no money down. Um, the median down payment in 2006, 2.4%. And now um, it's 33.1%. So the median down payment is even more than 20%. And we're seeing that in our market too, where maybe their parents are giving them a healthy chunk of money to put down or they're selling a property that they have bought and have equity in and rolling that into a new property. They are, once they put that house on the market, let's say the move up market or even move down, the prices jump so dramatically as far as equity and that's across the board in the whole nation. Mm -hmm. but even though these numbers are California numbers, the national numbers, everybody has equity. I mean, 96% of everybody that's in forbearance right now has equity, 96%. So, right. forbearance didn't turn out like it. They had hoped that it wasn't going to, and the people that hoped that it wasn't going to were right. Right, and the foreclosure, we heard a statistic on a call yesterday, is less than 1% across the nation right now because everybody has equity. There's no reason to foreclose when you can sell your house and walk away with money. That's right. Right, so it's very, very, very low. So we don't see that crash, like the market's going to crash. We're like, no, we don't see that. Um, another statistic is vacation second homes, which is the market we're in. We are here at the beach. It's the highest it's been in the last four years at 6% of purchases are vacation and second homes. So 6% are vacation and second homes. That means still 94% of everybody are buying here, California, as primary residents. Right. So right. that number is kind of shocking. You would think that it would be you know, a little less, but... Uh, right, well, it's the highest it's been in four years, so I think that, that's a lot. A lot of people, we'll get to this, the cities here, we're gonna move along a little faster here. Um, the percentage of home sales that were sold over asking price is 71%, which is really, really high. I wanna talk about here that 20 cities grew 
by more than 40% last year. And this is just in the state of California. But to give you an idea why the vacation homes and the prices are screaming up, what do you think the number one city is that grew by more than 40% last year? You know, I looked at the list. So okay. It's probably not it's a fair you. question. It's Big Bear. So Big Bear, you know, is a small community. It's a mountain community outside of Los Angeles um, where they get snow. But that's number one. Grew 100% in 2020. Well, now, you know, I just find it hard to believe that Big Bear is a city, but it must be. Well, it is. It's a small <laughs> one, but so 100% growth, though, is still a lot. Malibu, percentage growth, 85%. Now, I know Malibu's not uh, Montecito, 85%. <laughs> Uh, and then it goes down Lake Arrowhead 56%, South Lake Tahoe 50%. So these are mountain towns. But they've also uh, traditionally been vacation home markets or second home markets. But people are getting out of the cities. The same is true in the Bay Area where Marin County, Tiburon, uh, the places that surround the big ci uh, cities are growing at a rapid pace. Because in 2021, the 30 cities that have doubled from 2020 Number one is Palos Verdes Estates, which is a suburb of Los Angeles. Pebble Beach, Pacific Palisades, San Francisco, Malibu, Healdsburg. These are all very expensive communities that have more than doubled. Uh, Marina Del Rey, 118%. Uh, Calabasas, 115%. So it's just crazy. Menlo Park, Redondo Beach, Agora Hills, Beverly Hills. So all of you know, these high-end markets have doubled. That's Correct, please. That is correct. So, when you get ready to buy or sell, who are you going to call? GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Thanks, guys.